is this Canon EOS R6 Mark 1 still relevant in 2024? Well, let's find out. Hey, what's going on everyone? Hope you're doing all right. My name is Matt, this is Dwyer Creatives. Now, this is my main camera that I've been using professionally for the last three years. And I wanted to share whether I think it is still relevant for a camera you should be looking at in 2024. Let's just go over a few specs real quick. This was released in July of 2020 and it comes with a 20 megapixel full frame CMOS sensor with a Digic X processor. It shoots 4K 60 at 10-bit 422 color and it has a 5-axis in-body image stabilization, which all goes into a weather seal package. This also includes a dual-pixel CMOS autofocus 2 with 1,053 autofocus points, and it also offers advanced subject detection for people, animals, and vehicles. It shoots at 12 frames per second mechanically and then up to 20 frames per second using the electronical shutter. It also uses their newer RF mounting system. So let's get into why I feel like this should be an option if you're looking to upgrade to a camera or get a new camera in 2024. Now it is currently April of 2024, so in just a few months in July, this camera will be four years old, meaning that there have been several other generations of cameras that have been released. That will drop the price in, especially in the used market, you're gonna find this around 12 to $1,600 right now. Now, comparing it to other relative cameras within the Canon family, you're looking at the R6 Mark II, which is about $2,400, the R5, which is about $3,200, or the R8, which is about $1,400, which is their entry-level full-frame camera right now. So let's compare that to some other brands of cameras too. The Sony A7R5 is about $3,900. The A7C2 is about $2,200. Fujifilm X-T5 is about $17, and the X-H2S is about $2,500. Now, as you can see, some of those cameras are a little bit newer. They may have some different features or more advanced features, but you are going to be paying substantially more for those features. Now, let's jump into the quality of the images and video. For me, I put this camera through the rigors and it always exceeded my expectations. Uh, there's one little caveat to it, which I'll get into. So. For me, again, working for a not road company, doing all their media, I was shooting both indoor and outdoor. For outdoor, whether we're on the road shooting rollers or if we're at events in either like Texas, Arkansas, or some of these Gulf states, I did amazing with all those situations. Now, one thing that I did have to deal with was the high heat and the high humidity, which I did say there's one caveat and I'll get to that in just a second. But on the photo side, I had no issues. I was able to get my rollers. I was able to get the photos at the event and both outside of the shop. On inside the shop, I did a lot of my footage, especially for like our install videos inside the shop. And this was on like the undercarriages inside the engine bay, working with the powder coat booth or the grinding booth or welding booth or just different parts of the shop that didn't get the best lighting. I would have to crank up that ISO and for me, I was able to crank it high enough where I still got very usable footage and I posted that content with no issues for me. Um, you might have had to do a little bit on the post process, but overall the camera held it really well. Now, like I said, photos, no issue, but my one issue with this specific camera and it's a well-known problem was overheating. Again, I was based in Louisiana at the time, so we had like 100 plus degree weather and the humidity is like 100%, so it's like walking through soup shooting for long periods of time, my camera overheated. There's a few ways to kind of mitigate that. Um, as you're shooting, you just turn it off and those little in-between periods, not ideal, but it does work and it will extend it. I had to do this at one of our events too. My camera started to overheat and I noticed it on and off. And then you wanna make sure that this little screen here is open, gives it, I guess, a little bit more airflow and you'll prolong the issue with the heating. But if you are a primarily video person and not really looking for the hybrid, I would probably pass on this because that is one thing that's making me want to upgrade from this to maybe like the R5C or something like that. Now, in terms of ergonomics and going through the menu, for the most part, I love this camera. I'm a Canon person. I've always shot on Canon. My first camera that I bought was a Canon. And this is just another continuation in that line. I do enjoy sh using other cameras, but this is my professional camera as of right now. For me, everything is easy to reach. Going through the menus, you have your shortcuts and you're able to access things pretty quickly. Now, the one little thing that I do wish that this camera had 
as a hybrid shooter, a lot of times I'll be taking photos and I want to jump straight into video. Instead of coming over to this dial here and switching over, I wish you had one little button that would allow you to jump straight into video in your settings that you set. Now it does have a video mode, but it doesn't really work that way. Now let's talk about their mounting system a little bit. The RF mount is their newer kind, well, at this point it's not really newer, but is the mounting system they use for their mirrorless cameras. And their lenses are great. And I've been really happy with the different ones that I've used. Their third party support hasn't been the best yet, but apparently Sigma is gonna be coming out with a few different lenses, so I'm really excited about that. But you do have one alternative. This right here is a RF to EF mounting adapter, and it allows you to use EF glass, which is a very good thing because as people are moving from the DSLRs to the mirrorless, which means they're going from EF to RF, a lot of people like using the native mount, which means that you're gonna have more and more of these EF lenses now on the market. Because there's so many third parties, you do have a lot of different options for different lenses out there. Now for battery life, I find that these Canon batteries will last you about half day of shooting. For me, um, I'm using reference at like a off-road event or if I'm doing a heavy day shooting at the shop. So I carry minimal two of these if I'm expecting that. I do think that on the video side, this does go through them pretty quickly. So if you are doing an all day shooting, uh, specifically video, the more batteries to have, the safer you'll be. Now for editing video and photos. For me, when I started working on this, I was using Adobe products. So that'd be Lightroom, Photoshop, Premiere Pro, and After Effects. And I had no issues with that footage. Currently, I'm using a different process. I'm using Capture One and DaVinci Resolve. And I have no issues editing the photos or videos working through those softwares. If you have any of the major ones out there, you shouldn't have any issues with it. And again, because it is an older camera, the firmware updates are out there and they've already resolved most of the bugs out there. So those are my reasons why I think that this is a very usable camera in 2024, the Canon EOS R6 Mark I. Let's do a little recap. For price, I think you can find these at a very decent price for what you're getting, especially on the used market. Now that's what I've done in the past for a majority of my cameras is I found them on the secondhand market and you just may have to do a little digging and make sure you ask the right questions but those gems definitely can be found. For photos and video, I think that you'll be very happy, again, especially since most of this is going to social media. Now, again, I wanna just really say this because it has been an issue with me, and if you are considering this for primarily video purposes, I have had problems with this overheating. If you're shooting for long periods of time, this is not the camera to get. If you're shooting as a hybrid shooter, I definitely think this is worth picking up. Now, looking at these lenses, you have the RF line, and then of course their older proven EF line. If you're just starting out, it'll allow you to find more lenses at decent prices, opposed to just buying one or two of the RF lenses at a higher price. And my last little point, again, I'll reference back to when I first got this, off-road company doing all their media. This camera has definitely been put through the rigors, indoor, outdoor, in climate weather. It's hell up strong. It's still the camera that I use today. I have no issues other than that overheating thing, which I've found a way to mitigate it. That's why I think that this is a very relevant camera in 2024 if you're looking for your first camera or are looking to upgrade. Now, down in the comment section, let me know if you have been looking at this camera and if you have any additional questions I didn't answer. Let me know if you have this camera and what your experience with it. I'll go ahead and wrap this up right here. So as always, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.